All right, my friends, let's do another list because I've got some stuff to share with you. Number one, do not use detection zones in space. So I have my ship here all set up to demonstrate this, but basically what happens is in space there are particles that get created when you go faster than like 2,000 kilometers per second, hour, second, minute, second, when you go fast. Those particles pass through your ship and are actually physical. Now, like they can't destroy your ship or hit you or whatever, but they do set off detection zones. So if you have detection zones in space, what happens is they start spamming on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, every time one of those particles passes through the detection zone. So let's go ahead and take this up into space, and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so we managed to get into space. If you watch this screen right here, this is hooked up to this detection zone, you'll see it blink. That is the screen turning off and on as these particles pass through this detection zone. So if you had a detection zone, let's say hooked up to this board right here, it would turn on and off the board constantly. If you have doors, it'll turn on and off your doors constantly. If you have a force field, it'll turn your force field on and off constantly. Basically, don't use detection zones in space. If you have to refresh something, it's easier just to put the board in front of you so you have access to it. Um, or if you really want something to turn on and off when you enter a room, you could try the uh, infrared lasers um, set up as a trip or something. But in general, just try to stay away from these in space because they can cause you a lot of headaches, especially if you have a bunch of scripts and they're linked to a detection zone. It'll cause massive script shutdowns uh, and restarts like constantly um, which can also crash your computer I had actually made that mistake uh, which is why I'm passing on this information to you so there you go tip number one done number two start a library even if you don't have all of this fancy stuff from a voxel library you can get a uh, large or medium core. This is a large. Oh, no, this is a medium. This is a medium. Um, and you can start saving things from your designs uh, onto this template, right? So if you find something that works in your designs, you want to keep that for future designs, start your own library or add it to a existing voxel library. Uh, this voxel library was gotten from, um, I believe, BIA uh, at the Block Warehouse. Um, but you can see I've got like little shapes that I've used before. This uh, cool little bridge um, console that I worked on before. We've got some lights here, some slats. Um, this is a piece from the bridge of one of my other ships. Um, and, you know, it just helps out so you don't have to recreate everything from scratch or go running off to another ship somewhere else on your landing pad to copy and paste uh, something onto a new ship. And it will help in the long run, especially as your creations grow, so too will your library. Number three, don't slow boat in the pipe. Now that sounds like something that may be kind of dirty, but let me explain what the pipe is. If we open up our map here and we look at the system, you can see, uh, kind of, and I'm sure you can find a graphic or something, but let's say that you're going from Alioth to Ion. The pipe would be the direct line between Alioth and Ion. So if you were to leave Ion and set a course directly at Alioth, you would be in the pipe. 
And why do we stay out of the pipe? Well, because PvPers love to get people in the pipe. <laughs> Which also sounds like something kind of dirty. So what the PvPers will do is they will get a low-cost warp shuttle and they will just warp back and forth between Ion and Alioth, Ion and Alioth, Ion and Alioth. And as they warp, they can see everything in the pipe um, on their radar. So as they warp past you, if you're slow boating, let's say you're here or whatever, as they warp past you, their radar is going to pick you up. And due to uh, creative scripting and other stuff, they can store your uh, current location um, right on the dot. And what they'll do then is they will warp back to Ion or whatever, get in their PvP boat, warp back, and as they're coming up on your location, they will log off and log back on. And what that does is it drops them out of warp. So, so uh, yeah, they're able to uh, basically drop right on top of you and start firing. Um, most of the time they'll drop out at like maximum range so they can start hitting you with their uh, their rail guns at range, um, disable you, pop your core, come up, replace your core, take your ship, all done. So we do not slow boat in the pipe unless you have a death wish um, because this game operates on who has the best connection. So you may think, well, if something targets me, I'll just hit the warp button and off I go. Um, but if you get hit first, um, your warp drive goes into cooldown and you can't use it as long as you're getting hit. Um, and sometimes due to desync, your notification that you've been targeted and the sh first shot come at exactly the same moment. Um, so that is no bueno. We actually had that happen where the notification popped up uh, and the first shot actually missed the ship, luckily, and we were able to hit the warp button and start the spool up. Um, if that shot had hit, we would have been stuck and the pirates would have come and just destroyed us. And it doesn't matter. You can, you can try to fast maneuver and try to get away or whatever, but they'll just pop back into warp find your new location, and then drop out on top of you again. Or just keep warping in front of you, uh, thanks to that. So what are the ways around this? Well, you can use the same exact method for, uh, for popping around as they do. So what, what you can do is set a warp location for the closest point, right? So if you're on Ion and you don't want to use a lot of warp cells, set a warp location for Simeon. And then as soon as you hit that warp, Give it about a three count and drop out of warp. Well, now you're over here heading towards Alioth, which you're going inter to intersect the pipe maybe right about here, but now you're further out um, in between Ion and Simeon. Now, you know, if you want to take that a step further, you could set a warp point towards Thades, warp in that direction, and then just as you're about here, you know, drop out of warp, log off, log back in. So now you're way outside the the uh, the pipe, and it's going to be way harder for pirates to locate you. I mean, if you really want to get out, you could set a warp point for Felly and drop out somewhere in between here. Then you're way out of the pipe. Uh, <laughs> and if you don't want to use any warp cells um, and you just really hate life, then what you can do is plot a location towards Alioth, Turn your ship so you're facing away from Alioth and hard burn for like an hour or two in like this direction and then turn towards Alioth and burn towards Alioth. You're going to waste a lot more fuel that way, um, but if you are intent on slow boating, that is a way of getting out of the pipe and it makes it a lot harder for people running their warp shuttles back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to pick you up. Number four. How not to blow your ship up when docking. Or, as I like to call it, the maneuver tool hokey pokey. So, you know how the hokey pokey goes, right? So, we got our uh, our little... Bleh. Come come here! Come to me. There we go. So, we got our little mining wheelchair here. I can go ahead and put it in here, right, with the maneuver tool. 
you don't ever want to try to fly your ship in there because it generally won't stick. Um, so I always stand outside the ship and use the maneuver tool and just kind of point it at the ground and look at my feet and then let go. And what that does is it like pushes the stupid thing as far as possible downward so that it sticks. And if it doesn't stick, well, then your ship will explode. So how do we keep the ship from exploding? Well, you do the same thing with the, uh, the bigger ship as you did with the smaller ship, right? So let me turn these off so they're not in the way. I'm going to grab the bigger ship and I'm going to shake it around. Just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, right? And if the thing doesn't fall out or fall off, it's there. It's docked. <laughs> now, an example of what happens if it's not docked. So let me take this out. I'm just going to go ahead and stick it like right there. Apparently, it's still docked. Okay. Well, it of course, when you're recording something, it doesn't want to actually like listen, right? So let's take this out. I'll put it on the ground here. Bloop. All right. Now, let me just stick it in there. That's what she said. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So it didn't stick, and the ship just popped off of it. Now, if you try to take off with the thing like that, your ship will explode. Um, so we always use a maneuver tool. If you click on it and it pops out of the thing, it's not docked. Um, and that's why I always just put it in there, look at the ground, unclick, and it usually sticks pretty well. And you can do that with any ships. I've also found that like, if you're trying to dock a, uh, a, like an extra small core or a small core ship to a medium core, um, I always go ahead and take the landing gear off. You don't need direct contact. You don't need direct voxel to voxel contact. Um, but the landing gear make it pop like slightly above the, uh, the docking bubble that they have right now, um, which apparently in a point patch coming up, they're going to fix this whole thing and we won't have to worry about it. But I do the same thing. I take the, the smaller craft, put it on top, point at the ground, and then, you know, grab the ship. And shake it around and why do i call that the hokey pokey well it's because you know you, you take your mining ship in you put your mining ship out you put your mining ship in and you grab the other ship with the maneuver tool and shake it all about that's the hokey pokey <laughs> and that's what it's all about boop number five how to fix problems. Yes, problems. Now, when I say problems, I mean problems, for instance, your ship is now stuck inside of a building. Um, you landed your ship at area, uh, area 18. You landed your ship at market six, and then suddenly you're now inside somebody else's ship. Um, you are stuck inside somebody else's ship. You are stuck inside the runway, etc., etc. Your ship is floating in the air and you can't get it down. So the first thing you want to do if you're stuck inside something, use slash unstuck. You can type it in any chat window. You can just go ahead and, you know, use your own chat or whatever and type slash unstuck. If you hit enter, it will pop you outside of uh, whatever you were stuck in a good five to 10 meters and will fix you. If your ship, however, is stuck, let me give you some advice. If you got your ship stuck in a building or a runway because you landed before any of that spawned, you probably have a bad connection. This game transfers a lot of information, which hopefully will be fixed by some of these uh, additions that they're trying to do um, with container streaming and things like that. But for now, it requires a pretty hefty uh, data transfer rate. So the reason you might land and then you're not seeing any buildings um, is because you landed at a location before the game has realized that you're actually at that location and gone, oh, I need to stream these buildings in. So what I would suggest before you use the fetch command is to log off and log back on and get far away from everything. So if I was going to use the, the fetch command, you have a five kilometer range on the fetch command. 
So if I was going to use the fetch command and I have a bad connection, I'm going to go as far away from my original ship as I can, maybe out to the grass over there or somewhere where there's not any buildings. I'm going to stand there. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to log out. Uh, I might clear my cache before I log back in and then I'm going to log in. And then what I'm going to do is open my map, bring up my list of constructs which I'll just use the Scantron Max as an example. Um, and again, it has to be within five kilometers, so I wouldn't be able to fetch this. Uh, but this t will tell you how far away something is, right? If I right click here, I can use this fetch command right here. It does have a 24 hour cooldown, which is why I say make sure you move away from any structures and then relog. What relogging does is it forces the game to say, I am standing right here. What might happen if you don't relog and you have a slow connection is you're standing here, but the game thinks you're over there. So you might use the fetch command and create a whole nother problem. So let's say you use the fetch command and now your ship is stuck in a different building. <laughs> what can you do then? Well, if you hit enter and you go to this uh, help chat here, if you type at gm and then your message so help ship is stuck in building right that will get the attention of the gms so some people jump in there and they just start saying ha i need help 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 if you type at gm and then your message it will actually alert the gms that you have now typed a message and they will try to help you out as best they can but that is the fastest way to get the support there if you've created a ticket then use at gm i created this ticket ticket number blah 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 and they can kind of get you sorted out there all right all right so that's how you fix those issues and get support for what ails you number six Vertical thrusters use space fuel. <laughs> so I'm adding this because I've seen this more times than I can count in chat where somebody says, I just got this ship. It's fueled up, but I can't take off. Well, nine times out of 10, it's because you have vertical boosters on your ship. Vertical boosters are a favorite of ship designers opposed to, um, uh, the the hover engines uh, because vertical boosters also work in space so they can be used for maneuvering they can be used on low gravity planets they can be used on no gravity planets with no problem hover engines can only be used on uh, on planets with atmosphere so nine times out of ten if you have rocket engines on your ship you also probably have vertical boosters and vertical boosters use space fuel. So check it out, right? If your ship won't take off and you have vertical boosters, not only do you have to put fuel in your blue container, but you have to put fuel in your red container, which is your space fuel container. Um, so you may not be planning on going out of the atmosphere at all, but you still need space fuel in order to take off because your vertical boosters use space fuel. Um, now, what space fuel goes in these things? Well, it is Kurgon. However, there is four varieties of Kurgon, and you cannot match them. So most people on Alioth use K2 because it is made from readily available materials, right? Or materials that people can get. So if you go and you buy a bunch of K1 space fuel from somebody and you find yourself at a new location and you only have K2 available... Um, you're going to need to drain all of the fuel out of your tank and replace it with the K tool because you can't put, you can't mix K1 and K2. It's kind of like you can't mix, um, you know, uh, regular and super unleaded in a high performance engine. Um, the regular fuel is just going to mess it up uh, if it's something that requires like a high octane fuel uh, or something else like that. So there you go. Uh, if your ship don't take off or if you're planning on getting a spaceship in the future, make sure you have both containers fueled. Number seven. Label your factory. Now, this may seem a bit tedious at first, but I guarantee it will save you a lot of time in the long run. 
So the way I have my factory set up is I have, um, whoop, I have these hubs that all link to different things. So I have like this hub that links to my raw bauxite and HEMA containers. And, you know, I've got this one that links to my pure carbon and silicon containers, et cetera, et cetera, hydrogen, oxygen, honeycomb. And uh, I can expand on this as I get bigger. Now, uh, why do you want to label these things? Well, if you have a problem, like right now, I only have a few um, a few of these recyc refiners, not recyclers. I have a few of these refiners running, each of them with their own ore. So I have three processing hematite, I have three processing um, bauxite, three processing coal, and three processing um, silicon. Um, so let's say that I, I put a bunch of stuff in here and I, and I set it and it's still not working. Um, and I look on here, um, if I don't set the names, these are just gonna have the default names, right? So this one tells me that my input is linked to the raw uh, bauxite and hematite hub. And my output is the pure iron and aluminum hub. And the only reason it tells me that is because those are labeled. All right, all right. Alternatively, if I wanna go over here and I wanna see um, what is linked to my pure iron aluminum um, containers, if I go into build mode and I open my linking tool, well, you can see all these purple lines, right? If I look away, they disappear. I can hold shift control down, but then I see every single link in here and I don't, I, pst, I, it's harder, I can't follow this line. They're all pink. Um, if I right click on here, I can uh, look at my outlinks, right? So if I go to this remove inlinks, I can see all of my inlinks. And if I go to remove outlinks, I can see all of my outlinks. So if I'm having a problem, I can see that um, this pure iron aluminum is connected to the to the oxygen transfer unit. It's connected to the hydrogen transfer unit. It's connected to honeycomb refiner one, honeycomb refiner two, and honeycomb refiner three. Um, what it is not connected to is honeycomb refiner four. So if I'm having a problem with honeycomb refiner four, now I know that that one's not the one that's connected. And again. As I said, the only reason I can see these names is because I went through and labeled them. Now, how do you label? Well, if you're in build mode, you can go over to a unit. Like, let's come over to this one right here. And uh, you can right click and you can go to rename element. Um, and as you see by default, it's just called transfer unit. Now I'm not using this one, so it's not labeled. But if I look at this one, it says transfer unit oxygen. So I know that this transfer unit is pulling oxygen out of a container and sending it to a different container, which is my oxygen container. Um, and you know, it just, it, it helps a ton if you're trying to figure out where a problem is, especially as you get bigger and bigger, you don't wanna be clicking through every single thing to figure out where your missing link is, right? If I come over here and I, and I see that, uh, Let's say I open this up, right? I click activate. If I open this up and I see that this is connected to, let's say my oxygen hub. Well, I know right off the bat that that's wrong because it'll say oxygen hub. I need the raw coal and quartz hub, not the oxygen hub. And like, let's say further down the line, I'm like, well, where this stuff is coming out of here, but it's, it's not going, where's it going? Well, this output will tell me where it's going as long as I've labeled it. Otherwise, it's just going to tell me output 54 uh, or uh, um, container hub 54. And then you're like, well, which one of these is container hub 54? So when you get started at the beginning, that's just my, uh, my tip or trick or whatever is just go ahead and label all of these. Um, as you get bigger, you're going to thank me that you went through and you labeled everything, especially like your containers. Um, if you lose your links or something, let's say you accidentally pick one of these up uh, in build mode and you're like, crap, I just erased that. Um, well, let me put it back down. Now, no, none of the links are there. So, you know, if you if you went up here and you looked at the containers, you can see like this one's a honeycomb container. This one's an oxygen container, et cetera, et cetera, and link them back correctly to the hubs. Um, same thing as you expand, just keep labeling keep going right um you know if this whole floor was filled with with uh ore processing i'm not going to want to try to figure out exactly where 
the coal one is um, if I forget or I take a pause or something, right? Or if one of them comes unlinked and I'm like, crap, which one of these goes where? There's so many pink, pink lines and they're all going here. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. If you have any other tips and tricks that you'd like me to include in maybe a future video, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Uh, if you just want to say hello, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. And don't forget to also subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to be notified every time I post up a new video. Until next time, I will see you out there in space. Stay safe, my friends.